I'm going to continue to say something here on this question of the individual and individualism. I want to just suggest that there is something that's so right-minded about some of this, but I think the people who I'm haggling with are we're missing at some points of contact. Now, I think a different way for me to, let me see if I can orient a, a different way. From my perspective, all communication is systemic and occurs in a, a system that has multi-levels. It's a whole-on-like system where parts and holes can be broken out for purposes of analysis. But there is, in ultimate reality, not really a full and sustained part or whole. It's an unending dance of temporary lines of merger and division that make possible what we call entities, individuals, and that's all itself within a very objective framework. Now, when I say an objective framework, I mean there seems to be, as an empirical fact, the receiver of any communication is the driver of that system. See, I think in, in lots of ways of getting at communication, people can talk about the sender who sends a message off to someone, and then that the sender somehow drives the system. And then some people say, no, it's the message, and some people say it's the context. I think it is all of those things, but I think empirically the receiver drives the system. My guess is that that is what those people who want to talk about individualism are clinging to, and I think if that's what they are clinging to, I agree with you. Yes, there, there happens to be a sort of empirical fact now, but even though the receiver drives the system, the receiver is itself not an individuated thing. The receiver itself is an articulated function within the system that's a temporal function, it's a linguistic function, it's a socio-historical function, uh, it's a social function. And so the more that you look at the sort of time-gathering function of the individual, the individual as a unique constellation of relations in the socio-historical fabric that we sort of call reality, right? This, this individual node, it's always embedded within a system that has temporal dimensions, social dimensions, linguistic and uh, what could we call semiotic uh, systems. All, all of these are partly what make the individual what it is, but, yeah, ultimately, the individual drives the system. The receiver drives the system. But that the, the problem becomes when people don't realize the degree to which their very individuality is a sum expression of social, historical, and linguistic um, relations and contributions. So I think a different way for me to say it is, and this would be an attempt to try to get some people to do a response video here. What I would like to see is people who really want to express this notion of the individual and the individualism. Here some person suggested something to the effect here, let me see here, that uh, per some person was giving a uh, sort of objectivist position via Ayn Rand and was giving the, you know, that there really is no society, it's all just I individuals. I mean, there's a sense in which, yes, everything is in your mind. But, uh, you know, I think there, that's, there's a lot of truth to that, right? Each individual sort of contains the entire whole of reality, right? That what you take to be reality is really just you knowing that. But that itself is already a socio-historical phenomenon. So here's the question. The, the video response would be, for those people who value thinking for themselves and this kind of individualism that they want to place over and against the society, what are your resources for cultivating your own thought? I mean, because it seems like, if you, everyone's going to say, well, everyone just has their own thought, everyone has their own opinion, and I want to think for themselves, people want to think for themselves. Well, it's sort of odd, because then you might as well just wander around aimlessly, just walk around, you know, try to get your information from cereal boxes or from, from whatever. Um, 
how will you decide where you're going to begin your dialogue? It seems like you're always already assuming some social network where you're going to value some sources rather than others. You're going to realize that the information itself is always made information by someone, at least if it's linguistic. Uh, there's some words posted somewhere. It's not just the truth about it. I mean, you could say, well, research suggests. Well, who said the research suggests? Who are the scientists who said that? You know, I think when we begin a field of study, we can begin with these notions that, yeah, studies suggest or people have claimed. But when I think the more advanced we get into a field of study, the more we want to say, well, what people made that claim? Science is a collective enterprise. Science is not an individualist expression. If anything, science is a testament to the value of the time-binding function of people. The individual emerges out, and then as it emerges out, it begins even before we call it coming to age and self-awareness and self-reflection, it still is the driver of the system. See, there's, there's an empirical fact of the, the receiver is the driver of the global, what we call the communication system, the reality, what we take to be our interpretations of the world, all this sort of stuff. Um, but that's like an empirical fact. That just always happens. Again, the question would be, what are the resources for thinking for yourself, if not dialogue with other people? What, where, where will you get your ideas? From your experiences? Well, those experiences are already laden with social values, with socially intelligible interpretations. Um, the question becomes, which others? Are you watching TV, hanging around, imagining yourself as a consumer whose task is to be well satisfied by the latest chip and the best sitcom, something made you know there that's, again, that might be fun. Uh, but to what extent is it a struggle to cultivate one's mind by engaging in book culture, finding people from centuries ago who have struggled with some of the great mysteries of our existence, and they struggled with these many, many, you know, uh, years after years, the, their entire lives, and they didn't have other distractions the way that we do. We are so, us moderns, we're so packed with daily distractions that we stand in shameful neglect of our intellectual forebearers. So many of us have lost all sense of historical indebtedness. They stand atop a huge, huge mountain of history, and then they act as if they popped out of the sky and on top of it, not realizing all that had to be cleared to make room for this sort of now expressed socio-historical function that we call the individual. Okay, I hope that some of that makes sense. And please, someone respond. Uh, what are the resources for people to think for themselves, if not other people? Thanks.